Hey, this is Stephen. Welcome to our Mission Sunday here at Misty Creek Community Church. I apologize that I'm not with you in person today. You know, one year ago, September 15th, 2019, we launched Misty Creek Community Church in the Stone Chapel. Now, we began as a house church before that in April of 2019. We knew from the very get-go that we would be a missions-focused church, that we would serve others. You know, churches are known for all sorts of things, for preaching and teaching and discipleship and children's ministry and youth ministry and evangelism and, and outreach and, and praying. I believe that Misty Creek is known for all of those things. But when I hear people speak about Misty Creek out in our community, I hear them say, Misty Creek is a mission-oriented church. They serve people. They, they love people. They're a Bible-believing, truth-teaching church. And they're Holy Spirit-driven. Yes, and that is so true. That's why it's so appropriate today on this Mission Sunday that we talk about how God is using you as a congregation and our community to make a huge difference. At Misty Creek, we're on the move with Jesus. Our mission is to love God, love people, and make disciples. Jesus said in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 15, preach to all the world, preach the gospel. And then in the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, where he tells us to love one another, and he tells us to go to the ends of the earth, proclaiming the message of the gospel and baptizing all people, all nations. You know, we are a Great Commandment, Great Commission church. That means we don't vote on those items. We just go and we do. At Misty Creek, we believe in sharing the love of Christ with our local community and abroad. Our prayer is that our church would become more like our community. I love how we hear in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And you've been just that. You've been a great witness for Jesus Christ throughout our community and throughout our world. You know, at this point, I just want to list off all the missions that we've done as a church, but it would take me an hour to do that. So I'm just going to highlight a few of those. You adopted several families at Christmas. Not only did you purchase items, but you went and hand-delivered items to folks that were in need. And that's a beautiful thing. Some of you even went to Waffle House and you tipped the waitress an enormous amount of money so that she could have Christmas for her family. That is absolutely phenomenal. How about collecting those stuffed animals for families in transition, for children that were struggling with grief or loss or despair or foster children that were having a difficult time adjusting? You provided that comfort through a stuffed animal. How about those blessing bags, an idea by our young adults, in which you took a gallon bag and you filled it with all sorts of practical items like toothpaste and shampoo. You even put a Bible in there, a bottled water, some applesauce, and you gave it to people who were not looking for a handout, just a hand up. And you sponsored a child, an infant, that needed life-saving heart surgery. You did that, and you funded that child's surgery. And now that child is living a perfectly healthy life, thanks to your generosity. You sponsored a high school baseball team, not just their uniforms, but all of their equipment, their baseballs, their bat, their catcher's mitt, their catcher's uniform, their helmets, everything. And although they only got to play a few games, you brought a big smile to their face as they played the game with pride in their new uniforms and their new equipment. You provided support and funding for the Community Action Center that serves thousands of families in the Atlanta area. You collected shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child and Samaritan Purse. And not only did you collect those items, you went to the distribution center and you helped pack those items to be shipped around the world. You provided missionary support for three families. That's massive. You supplied school supplies and backpacks for nearly 60 students who desperately needed those items for school. You know, at the start of the shutdown back in March, when we closed the doors of the church, but we really never stopped meeting. We began online services. And then you all, you left the building to do ministry. The church left the building. We got a phone call from Big Mouth Ben of Motivation Ministries asking us to provide some food for people who were hanging out at his store because they didn't have a shelter to go to. Not only did you provide 
some lunches, some food. For three straight weeks, you provided over a thousand lunches per week. That's 3,000 lunches to people that were hungry. And that ministry grew to the point over the last 30 weeks, we've collected, put together, assembled, delivered over 30,000 lunches. And there was born the Sack Lunch Brigade. It took many volunteers for this to happen. But thanks to your generosity, we are now serving many shelters in the Atlanta area. I just want to name a few of those. The Atlanta City Baptist Rescue Mission. The Atlanta Mission Men's Shelter. The Shepherd's Inn. The Atlanta Mission Women's Shelter. My Sister's House. I Care Atlanta. Motivation Forward. The Salvation Army. St. Vincent de Paul Society. The Welcome House, which is sponsored by Action Ministries. Even the Shamley Police Department and St. Joseph's Hospital. This didn't happen overnight. It's not just a Misty Creek Community Church thing. We have involved many neighborhoods, scout troops, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, grandparents and their grandchildren. People love serving and they've caught that desire to serve others. Today in this service, you're going to hear some personal testimonies from folks representing some of the shelters that we serve. You're going to hear some personal testimonies from folks at Misty Creek. They're going to share their hearts with what they love about this ministry. I want to acknowledge our missions team. They do a lot of work behind the scenes and they love serving others. I also want to acknowledge specifically Christina and Steve Porter. They don't need the accolades. Matter of fact, they don't want those accolades, but I'm gonna give them to them today. They've done so much behind the scenes. They've got our truck. They've picked up boxes. They've delivered sandwiches, picked up sandwiches, assembled the sandwiches, set the stage for us to come and bring our lunches every Saturday at noon. So a sincere thank you to the porters. And all of you, the list is too many to name, all of you who have participated in some way, shape, or form in the SLB, the SAC Lunch Brigade. I want to share a very familiar scripture passage with you. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Be ye therefore steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labors are not in vain. You are laboring for the Lord. He's going to continue to bless you and guide you if you put the needs of others before your own. That's what it's about. It's about serving others, taking care of, of others' needs. I want to tell you why I'm not here today, and I want to be with you. I, I cannot stand missing being at church with you on Sunday. I'm going to watch this service later. But I'm going to be sitting before a board today, the College of Pastoral Supervision and Psychotherapy, CPSP for short. I have just finished my fourth unit of clinical pastoral education, where I completed 2,400 clinical hours and 1,200 classroom hours, and I'll go before a committee today to hopefully be accredited and board certified as a clinical chaplain and pastoral care counselor. I look forward to being able to serve God in many different ways. You've played a huge role in all of this happening. I want to thank you for being faithful to Christ, being faithful to your pastor, being faithful to our community. May God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just overwhelm Misty Creek Community Church this morning. Those who've gathered to praise you and lift up your name, Lord, may they sense you and feel you and know that you're very well pleased with them the way that they are serving throughout the community and throughout the world. We thank you for this great church. We thank you for those that are here today that are speaking, that are testifying. I pray that you would speak through them and use them in a mighty way. We give you all the praise and all the thanks. And all God's people said, Amen. Good morning.
So Stephen asked me to share my story of what the Lunch Brigade has meant to me. First, I was really apprehensive. I'm not someone who loves to speak in public, but I did want to share what being a member of this Lunch Brigade has meant to me. So I think it, it, why it's so meaningful is during these turbulent times, being able to actually physically do something and help people who are hungry and in need, it just means so much to me and to, and to the community. And, and to, to watch our community, the way they've come together has really been a miracle. The first few weeks of the Lunch Brigade, our congregation made 100 to 200 sandwiches that we used to feed the hungry. When word got out, we saw the need and as of last month, we had days we were doing 2,000 sandwiches in a day. And it's not just the church anymore. It's our friends, our neighbors, our communities. It's Dunwoody and Sandy Springs all coming together to make sandwiches and to feed people who are hungry. A couple of weeks ago, I was there early waiting for the truck to arrive to load up to take the sandwiches down. An older gentleman was in the parking lot. And he walked up to my car and he, and he asked, is this where the lunches are? Is this where the lunches go? I'm like, hey. And um, I'm like, yeah, the truck's coming. We'll, we'll load them up in a minute. Tell me how you heard about the lunch brigade and what we're doing. And what he said is a lady who shops at his Publix where he works every week would come in to buy peanut butter and bread. And he finally asked her what it was for. And she told him what we were doing here. Well, that lady, Jean Mattel, is a friend of my wife's who responded to an email she sent asking for help from the community. She told William about what we were doing at Misty Creek, and he was so moved, he made sandwiches and brought them, not only that day, but the next week, and he stayed to help load the truck both times. Well, last week, a lady showed up, um, and she was said that she was there because William had told her at Publix, where she's a client, uh, a customer, about what the Lunch Brigade was doing, and she wanted to be a part of it. Later that same day, two of William's co-workers showed up, also with sandwiches, to also join in to help. It's just a miracle. It's like Jesus and the, the bread and the loaves where he feeds the multitude. It's just multiplying. Um, and it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to be part of. And it's something that I'm so proud of, not only of myself, but also my friends, my neighbors, my community. And most importantly, you, my congregation here at Misty Creek, it, it reminds me of the song that Doug's in the band often sing, where we sing, they will know we are Christians by our love. This is exactly what I think that song means, and I'm so proud to be a member of Misty Creek and part of the Lunch Brigade. Thank you. Kirsten Johnson and Pastor Stevens asked me to talk about the Lunch Brigade and what it's meant to uh, me and my family. Uh, the Lunch Brigade has been one of the many blessings in our lives during the COVID pandemic. It started off as a project that allowed us as a family together to safely serve those less fortunate than us. It was my prayer that these recipients would um, feel the love of God and feel seen during these uncertain times. But as always, when we serve others, we were also tremendously blessed in so many ways. The first few weeks, the kids and I made 10 to 20 lunches and would take them to Misty Creek Church. After a couple of weeks, I felt a nudge from God saying to send an email out to your neighbors. So I sent an email out to the Spalding Lake neighborhood. Now, I didn't know what to expect. Would people get mad that I used the email distribution list to solicit help? Um, would they just reject it? Um, you know, or would they be fearful of the virus? This was early on um, in the pandemic in March. Or just ignore the request. I really had no idea what to expect. The response was from the first week on was truly amazing and heartwarming. I parked my SUV at the end of the drive and I sat in the driveway um, and opened the back for the people to drop off. During this time, I met all kinds of people. I had only lived in this neighborhood for two years, so this was a wonderful way for me to get to know many of my neighbors. 
I met so many wonderful people along the way, people of all ages and walks of life that I can now call my friends. Now when I walk down the street, I know practically everyone I encounter, and if I don't remember them, they'll remember me and say, oh, you're the lunch brigade lady. There's really nothing like um, getting to know your neighbors so well, um, and I am happy to say that I have such warm, generous, kind, um, hearted neighbors um, to live by. I hear stories, I heard stories of families that made this a weekly um, tradition with younger kids decorating the bags and writing notes. It's an important part of their week and it was an, or it is an important part of my family's week with me and Jack and Emma on Friday night or Saturday morning assembling the bags together. I will never forget how we spent this time during the pandemic. Fast forward to July, because of the heat, et cetera, for the most part, I would just park the SUV at the end of the drive. And um, I thought, well, maybe um, the donations will dwindle because people are getting little to no recognition. I wasn't out there to greet them and thank them. Um, but uh, week after week, we continued to receive 100 to 300 sack lunches. In fact, when Stephen decided that we would um, continue in September, we all thought we were going to be done in August. I thought to myself, oh, really? We got to do another month? But Stephen reminded us that there's always a need. Um, and in fact, that last week um, was, I think, the most lunches we collected in Spalding Lake um, to date. So hats off to you guys in Spalding Lake. Um, the organizations that are here today are thanking Misty Creek for the support. My neighbors are thanking me for the opportunity to serve in such a way during these times. But it's all of them that I am truly grateful for the friendships, for the opportunity to show God's love through these 35,000 plus lunches. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We are honored today to have some special guests from the Salvation Army, and they are going to share a little bit about our partnership with them. So I would like to invite up, let's give a warm Misty Creek welcome, Christy Wood and Daniel Gertley this morning. Good morning, Misty Creek. Oh my gosh. I just, I have to take a moment to just thank you for inviting us this morning and sharing oh my gosh it's just i'm overwhelmed by what god's doing here i mean it's it's so obvious how he's blessing and growing this church and your ministries and i i just i don't know there's there's not words there's not words but i have to thank you for let you know being the lord's vessel for letting him use you and providing for so many people in need not just through the sack lunch brigade but through your other efforts as well um, to tell you a little bit about us, so we are the Salvation Army Shelter in downtown Atlanta. We have 326 beds right now, serving single men, women, and families with children. We also have recovery programs, so we have a little bit going on, you know, just a little. Um, and our kitchen, all during COVID, was short-staffed. So not only did we have to shelter in place and serve additional meals to additional individuals, but we did that with less service than we'd normally have. Obviously, we didn't have the volunteers and we didn't have the manpower um, or the community service that we would normally have to help our kitchen. So what the SAC Lunch Brigade did during that time was to ensure that we could give meals, um, especially to families who were in transit. Many, many children whose parents were working um, enjoyed those sandwiches when they may have missed a meal or, um, so it was just uh, the blessing that that was during that time is so powerful and I want you to know that it may just be peanut butter and jelly and bread slices, um, but it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that, especially with the inspirational message. Um, you're lifting up people who 
may not have been lifted up or acknowledged. And even doing that, you know, in the COVID way, in the six feet distance and on that, that's so powerful. So thank you so much. And thank you for having the courage to invite your neighbors. Oh my gosh, it's one thing for us to step out as Christians. It's another thing to send an email to a random group of people who you don't know and say, hey, this is happening. If you want to help, come. And it's amazing to see that the Lord has blessed those efforts the way that he has. So thank you for having the courage to continue that. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Y'all are amazing. You really are. Um, I can't wait to see what Misty Creek continues to do in the future. Um, and just so you know, with the Salvation Army, our kettle season is coming up. We are moving to some virtual online kettles this year as well. So if you've got people who are housebound who might have um, normally given to those kettles, we're expecting less monies this year because of the pandemic and the cash fears. Um, so please... Even if you can't give, maybe you consider sending that link out to someone um, that you know in your community or your families that are in need as well. Um, those funds not only help us provide shelter, but they help us to pay utility bills to keep people stabilized in their housing, um, which is something we've obviously also seen an increase in. So um, I pray that you and your families remain safe during these times, and we'll definitely keep Misty Creek on our prayer list here at the Salvation Army. Thank you all, and God bless. Good morning, Mr. Creek. Good morning. Um, when I came here this morning, you know, I had a long speech all planned and stuff. But after coming here, you know, I'm nervous I don't speak in public. I don't do all this stuff, you know. But after coming here and hearing um, all this stuff, man, it's, 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 it's incredible. It is totally incredible what y'all are doing here in Misty Creek. Wow. I'm just like, wow, wow. Um, I'm one of the consumers at the Salvation Army. I'm one of the recipients that receive one of those um, uh, lunch bags, bags, lunch bags, and I must tell you, we appreciate it. We appre I'm speaking on behalf of myself and other consumers at the Salvation Army. And when, they, when, the when the members of the church came to the Salvation Army the other day and they dropped them lunches off, it was not just us that we was that was blessed by that. It was also some people that live on the streets outside the gates also that was blessed by that. So I just want to let you all know how much we really appreciate it. And the, lo I'm, the love and the time and the commitment y'all put into this is, is, is far beyond amazing. I, I mean, wow. I mean, seriously. I, thank you all. Thank you all so much for what y'all have done. Y'all don't have no, y'all have no idea how much this means to us out there. And, um, especially because this pandemic that's going around, a lot of people that used to come out and feed the homeless, feed the people at the park, most of them are not doing it anymore. So for y'all, for, for Misty Creek to still be having this lunch brigade going on and still being committed to it, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Christy and Daniel. We love you guys. It's our honor to serve. It really is. Here today's scripture reading from the book of Matthew. These are the words of Jesus. And you know, when I was reading through these at home, it reminded me of you guys. And I am proud to serve Jesus along with, with brothers and sisters in Christ who really take his words seriously. And, and these are the words of Christ this morning. This is what he challenges us to do. He says, for I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Hello, Misty Creek Community Church and friends. I am so grateful to be able to speak to you today. My name is Katrina, and I have the honor of working with our partners and volunteers here at Atlanta Mission. And I just wanted to say thank you, a huge, huge thank you, for the outpouring of support that you all have ex extended to us since the pandemic began. You guys have been rallying as a huge community, and we have really been feeling the love and care that you guys have been extending to us. You know, we talk about community a lot around here, as we find that most of our clients, when they first walk through the doors at Atlanta Mission, are experiencing relational poverty. Relational poverty is the lack of trusted um, relationships that feel safe and that you can confide in. Another way to say it is community. And as our clients experience the lack of that and work to rebuild it as part of ending the cycle of homelessness, it takes partners like you guys showing up consistently to remind our clients that there is a community that rallies around them every single day and cares for them. 
And so by you guys showing up consistently in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the challenges that we have been navigating and making sure that our clients knew every single week how much they were cared for by writing notes of encouragement to them, making sure that they knew that the community was still here for them and caring and loving on them. It has made a huge, huge difference and impact on our clients and on our staff. And so I am just so grateful for all that you have done for us. Uh, we look forward to this partnership continuing and we just can't wait to see more of the blessings that are, we know are gonna be coming forth from this relationship. So thank you. Each night, thousands of men, women, and children are homeless around Metro Atlanta. But with your help, we can reduce the number, creating hope and empowering individuals to transform their lives for the better. Last year, Atlanta Mission served over 6,800 unique individuals, but that important work is only possible thanks to the time and talents of people like you. We started in 1938 with modest goals to provide meals and meet basic needs in response to the Great Depression. Today, we do much more. While we still meet basic needs, our mission is to transform, through Christ, the lives of those facing homelessness. With that belief in place, we have become one of the largest providers of homelessness and addiction recovery services in Atlanta. Thanks to the efforts of our employees and volunteers like you, we've now become a multi-campus facility. We have a downtown's men's campus called the Shepherd's Inn, a downtown's women's campus called My Sister's House, and an addiction recovery campus in Jefferson, Georgia called the Potter's House. And we are able to serve up to a thousand men, women, and children every night, keeping them out of the winter cold and summer heat. Our success relies on the way we approach the work we do. Our clients are not mere statistics. They are unique human beings with diverse stories and experiences. Some have lost their jobs, others are experiencing mental health issues and or drug addiction, and most have faced a traumatic life event. While homelessness usually is associated with material poverty, the lack of things or roof over your head, we find that the underlining issue is much deeper than that. Many who come to our doors do not have a community or even a friend to turn to when life gets hard. So we call this relational poverty, the lack of a trusting, loving relationship. For that reason, our personalized approach serves each client to not only address their physical needs, but their spiritual, emotional, social, and vocational needs. Our work and your work as a volunteer is as simple as people helping people, one friend at a time. Our mission, transforming through Christ the lives of those facing homelessness. Our vision, a community united in ending homelessness. Well, this service has flown by today, hasn't it? Let's stand together for our closing song, song of response. It's a simple chorus. You know, God, when he adopted us as his children, of course he wants us to love, he wants us to serve, he wants us to give. But he wants us to choose to do these things because we love him. You know, it's like our, our children. I, I, don't want, I want my daughter or, or my son to come up to me and say, I love you, Dad. Not because it's coerced or forced, because it's a free, free decision from their heart. And, you know, our father's the same way. We're created in his image. So let me pray for us, and we'll sing this song of response and maybe song of, of rededication to the Lord's purposes for us as his children. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this morning. And we thank you for the privilege and opportunity of being grafted into the vine, of being adopted as your children, Lord. We love you. We cherish you. And Father, give us a heart that sees this broken world as you do, Jesus. Help us to love the lost as you do, Christ. Help us to love you, to serve you, to give all that we have, our gifts, our talents, and our time you and to do it because we love you, Lord, and you are worthy of all things, all that we can muster. May we be willing to pay more of a price to have more of you, Abba. 
in our lives. We love you. We praise you in all things. And all God's people say.